Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I've got some exciting new kits to share with you from TACOM today, including two World War I German Zeppelins, you see on either side here in 350 scale, and then this Russian monster right here in 144 scale. Uh, just to let you know, I am working on a couple of different build videos right now. I know I get lots of comments, when are you going to do more build videos? I am. I'm in the process of working it, but as I do that, more and more new product keeps showing up, and I want, obviously want to share that with you guys as well. So, we've got some stuff to look at here that's really cool. Let's get started! Okay, we're going to start off by looking at the two Zeppelins. There is a Zeppelin Q class and a Zeppelin P class. Uh, the main difference is the actual size. So this one is a 510 millimeter. This is a 466 millimeter. And the reason I'm telling you all this stuff too is because this kit is identical to this kit except for a center section that extends the uh, the actual uh, Zeppelin itself making it a longer piece so they share quite a few of the parts so every part that is in this kit will be in here plus the extra so I'm gonna open up the Q class since it's the bigger one show you the parts that will be both in the Q and the P and then the parts that are only in the Q class so let's take a look at the Zeppelin Q class so we're going to take a look inside this Q class in just one second, but just a tiny little bit of history about both the Q and the P class. The uh, the P class was the very first one to go into production at the outbreak of World War One, first Zeppelin to go into production. A total of 22 of the P class were produced, and 12 more of the lengthened Q class, which you see right here in front of you. Uh, they were both used by the German Army as well as the Navy, and were deployed on the southern and eastern fronts as well as naval patrol work over the Baltic and. North Seas and these were the actual uh, Zeppelins that they used to bomb the United Kingdom during 1915 and 16 uh, but it also says by 1917 both classes had become obsolete uh, and were going to be dismantled whatever was left although most of them were lost to either accidents or to enemy action so let's take a look inside the Q class so here is the very first sprue uh, that comes in both kits and I have my old my cutting mat here out just to give you guys an idea of size. So the actual sprue is about 10 inches, but the actual front of the Zeppelin here is 7 inches on this particular piece. And then we're just going to zoom in here and let you take a look at all of the parts that are on here. Just like that. So remember, this is in both kits. Next up, we have our rear portion, which this too is also in both kits. Pretty, uh, pretty simple here. And then to give you an idea how big the, uh, let's see, the P class, this one will be about, about 16 and a half inches total when you put that one together. And the next sprue, this is the sprue that is only in the. Uh, the Q class, the bigger ones, because you can see the center support right here. Now they've gone ahead and made a separate sprue inside the uh, the P class that has these pieces in it. They're, they're, they look the same to me, if not they're really really close, but you're mainly getting this extra center section here. So it'll make it about almost 19 inches long once you get the uh, the entire Q class together. As you can see it's, it's fairly simple. There's not a heck of a lot of parts in the uh, the plastic end of it. Oh, one other thing too. This is the uh, the clear base that comes inside to support either one of them. But now we're going to take a look at the photo etch. And I'll try not to blind you so much here with it. But yeah, let's just try laying it down and zooming in a little bit. Yeah, there we go. And so these are the photo etch pieces that are coming inside the, the kit. And it looks like we've got some of the, like the bracing on there. And it looks like the propellers, things like that on it. And before we look at the instructions, I just want to show you the uh, the decals that come in the kit. As you can see, it gives you three different Zeppelin numbers uh, from 20 to 23, plus a assortment of iron crosses to put on the side of the Zeppelin as well. Now, you know, I like to show you the instructions. 
uh, to give you an idea what you're going to be in for when you go to build this here. And it's not going to be a heck of a lot here. So here's uh, step one, putting the front half together with like the little machine gun nest up in the top. Building the, the bottom of the, uh, the Zeppelin and the, the little gondolas underneath. Followed up by some of the little micro bracing there. And then just attaching the gondola section onto the bottom of the, uh, the blimp. I say blimp too. I, uh, I should say Zeppelin. In, in the U.S., we, we usually call big airships blimps. But uh, I guess the rest of the world uses the word Zeppelin. We know what that means, but uh, we usually use the word blimp. And some of the other instructions here. And finally got one more page of putting the three sections together and then it's just a matter of painting and there's some very unusual paint jobs here not just all solid gray or anything uh, we've got this one here with the uh, the tans and browns I guess I guess all three of these are tans and browns so here we go here's the camouflage one this one's interesting too. be a lot of masking on it here but quite the unusual uh, background and then we've got this one right here that's it. That is the entire breakdown of the Zeppelin Q class. And other than that one sprue, the Zeppelin P class. Okay, now we're going to take a look at a really, I think, strange and unusual... Uh, is it an airplane? I want to call it an airplane, but I don't know if it's technically considered an airplane. Because from what I understand, this only goes just a couple of feet uh, off the water, you know, similar to what they're showing in the box art here. I don't believe that it was designed to go, you know, like a couple thousand feet in the air, or if it even could at that point. It has all of those crazy banks of engines up on the front, as well as all of the uh, the armaments up on the, the top of the, uh, well, I'm going to call it an airplane for right now. I mean, I assume it's probably an airplane, uh, so you know what I'm talking about. But just a very, very unusual looking... Uh, piece. Now, I'm going to probably butcher the name on it. Uh, that's how I am, but what are you going to do? I'm going to call it a Loon Class Ekranoplan. Um, hopefully, I kind of got close on that, and I'm sorry if I didn't hit it, but uh, that's, uh, that's how I think it should be pronounced. So, let's take a look inside this 144 scale new kit coming out from TACOM. Okay, the first thing we're going to look at is the rear portion of the airplane. What you can see right here is quite unusual, the way this is. Uh, there is also two guns on the back here. Hopefully you can see those pretty well. And when you get this kit from TACOM, the entire back portion of this is wrapped in bubble wrap to protect those. Now I'm going to put this piece down, and then I'm going to take the front piece of it here to give you an idea how big we're talking about here and how it plugs in. Some really big connection points on this so it'll make it really really uh, strong connection when you put the two together and I'm just ballparking it it's probably about 18 inches long once you get the uh, the front and back and then oh with the tail sticking off the back too yeah it's probably at least 18 to 19 inches long and then we'll move this piece out now we'll show you a little bit more close up of this one here so we've got our front end and a portion of the uh, the tail that big big massive piece for the tail Next up, we have our wing sections, and as you can see, there's some some quite a bit of size. Remember, this is 144 scale, so those are some massive, massive wings there. Now we're going to take a look at the uh, actually what turns out to be the tail wings on this. Uh, I was looking at the instructions for a second too. They're calling it a ground effect vehicle, not an airplane. So from now on, I will call it a ground effect vehicle. So here are the the rear rear wings, or you know, like the stabilizers for the ground effect vehicle. We also have slide molded all of the uh, the engines, the engine detail at least on here. Next up, we have this big sprue. This has got all of our front engines that you got two pods of four on either side of the fuselage, a little bit of the cockpit, and the other accessories that make up the, uh, the rest of the airplane. So as you can see, not a heck of a lot of sprues. There are a lot of really nicely detailed big parts. We've got our doors here on the, uh, 
I guess they're they're called mosquito missiles, so anti-ship missiles, just like that. So now we can take a look at the uh, clear parts, the photo etch, and the instructions. Okay, we're going to zoom in here a little bit so we can see the clear parts, what comes inside of that. Here are the decals that are included in there. I believe there are three different sets of markings for this particular ground effect vehicle. Now here are the instructions and when I talk about there's not a heck of a lot to it, uh, it is true because here we have the first couple of steps, step one, two, and three. Turn the page, open this side up, and there are the full seven steps that are required to uh, build this airplane here. So it looks like it should go together pretty pretty quickly and pretty easily. It's just a matter of painting and weathering. Here are the markings that are coming inside this kit. You've got two different ones right here. And finally, on the other side, this uh, with the blue wings and the top of the fuselage being blue. So there is a look at the, once again, I, if I'm butchering it, sorry, the Loon class Ekranoplan from TACOM in 144 scale. Now, both the uh, Ekranoplan as well as all of the uh, Zeppelins are on our website at andyshhq.com for pre-order. They will be available, we estimate late November, early December, they should be arriving in this country. As you can see, we have full box art and everything, so the kits have been produced. It's just a matter of shipping right now. So if you're interested in any of those, you can go on our website and pre-order them up right now. So I want to take this opportunity to thank you as always for watching and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming. And speaking of many more videos coming, I was just about to uh, upload this video when these two kits just showed up. So I'm going to do a separate video of a preview of both the, uh, the new Tamiya M18 Hellcat as well as the Tamiya new Suzuki Echo Star GSX-RR20. So uh, both of these look forward in the, in the next day or two.